Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, on this very hot June day. Um, welcome to another session of Spring into Summer. Uh, I'm David Globerman. You've probably seen my face before a few times. And I'm the coordinator of supporting cast with PAL Ottawa. Um, I've, I've muted everybody because I don't want the, um, uh, the, any sound to interfere with, with Ginny's um, presentation. And uh, this session is being recorded and will be put on the YouTube channel uh, shortly after today, probably by Monday or Tuesday, something like that. So if people want to uh, revisit Ginny's presentation, they could do so. And you know, for people that um, didn't get a chance to actually attend today, they'll have a chance to, to review it. Um, Ginny will also have some slides and those will be posted as well at a later date. Um, if you have any, not if, I'm sure you'll have some questions. Uh, so I would ask that you um, uh, just, you know, send them through the chat function. And if it's a real, you, you, can, you can send those questions anytime you want, but um, if it's a real burning question that has to be answered right away as Ginny is presenting, I will ask the question on your behalf to Ginny. Uh, if not, then we'll just, you know, we'll have a running tally of all the questions and we'll pose them to, to Ginny at the end of her presentation. Um, as I mentioned, this uh, today's, or the spring into summer uh, festival is really part of uh, the social cir circle, which uh, my colleague, Julie Hodgson uh, started, uh, many years ago and is continuing. And the whole purpose of the social circle is to offer uh, different um, you know, presentations, session talks, discussions on a whole range of different topics that are educational and enlightening and entertaining. Um, so you know, we cover uh, arts, event, arts presentations, whether it's voice or dance or uh, uh, visual arts, or whatever, but also um, we also have discussions on a whole range of topics such as uh, long-term care or nutrition uh, or finance. Uh, so we, we try, we're trying to cover as many different uh, subjects as possible that are relevant to our membership. Um, today's presentation will be by Ginny Yu. I'll tell you a little bit about Ginny. Ginny work, Ginny's uh, work grows out of an inquiry into the medium of painting as a means of trying to understand the world around us. Um, she's a transnational artist who lives and works in Ottawa uh, on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation and in Berlin. Uh, recent solo exhibitions include, uh, I hope I can pronounce this right, Haute uh, at the Gallery Art Muir in Montreal in 2020, Perpetual Guest at the Gallery uh, UQO in Gatineau in 2019, and I Like My Countries and My Countries Like Me at the Korean Cultural Center here in Ottawa in 2019. Her exhibition, Don't They Ever Stop Migrating, was presented at the 56th Venice Biennial. Ginny's work has been shown widely, including exhibitions in Canada, Germany, Italy, Japan, Portugal, South Korea, the UK, and the USA. All places that we can't travel right now, but we will. She is recommended by Art Muir and is a professor of painting at the University of Ottawa. So without any further delay, let's give a warm welcome to Ginny Yu. Thanks, David, for, um, for the invitation. Um, and also uh, to Paul Ottawa. Um, it's nice to meet you all. <laughs> um, some black squares and some faces. It's nice to see faces. <laughs> um, I thought I did uh, talk about um, having the question sort of in the chat box and then uh, David prompting uh, when it is quite urgent. But I think since we're like two, four, six, uh, how many are we? Eight people together. I thought maybe it would be nicer to do like kind of when you have questions, if that's okay, David, with you, 
uh, when you have questions, just kind of ask, and it could be maybe more of a discussion type of thing, uh, rather than, you know, my straight presentation, and then you asking questions after, I think it's kind of nice to be a little bit less formal. Um, and I've brought um, three bodies of work to show. Um, and, you know, there are cer certain things that I would like to maybe open up and um, have some discussions um, as I go or towards the end um, of, you know, the recent um, crime scenes that have been, uh, crime scene that has been uh, discovered and maybe things that we could think about. And so that's, I'll sort of start presenting my work and then maybe we could sort of uh, think uh, through that a little bit and process. Um, so is that okay, David, that uh, we have sort of like more of a uh, less formal a um, Ab session? Absolutely. Uh, Jenny, would you like people's, uh, or let me put it this way, would you prefer that people be on video so you can it see them? Nice to, yeah, it would be nice to see okay. your face. Although like I will be uh, doing sh screen share, so you'll see a lot of my slides, but it would be nice yeah. to see who you are. I mean, I know I think only yeah, one sure. person in the- Okay, let me, let me just, uh, let me just, let me just, uh, if, if everybody could put on their video, if they, if they want to, only if they want to, um, the option is yours, you can put on your video. Um, so Ginny can see, see you because it is a small group. It's, we only have about nine people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll start sharing my screen and, um, uh, start to get going. So my name is Ginny Yu, um, and, oh, hold on. And... Sorry, this bar is okay. All right. Um, so yeah, um, I've been a practicing artist since around like late nineties. Um, I came to Ottawa in 2006 to take a job at the University of Ottawa. Um, before that I was a little bit here and there before that I was in living in Venice and then also living in Toronto um, New York and uh, Sackville, New Brunswick. And also I was born in South Korea in Seoul. So, you know, those are kind of my trajectory. And then in 2006, I came here um, to Ottawa on the unceded um, Anishinaabe Algonquin territory. Um, and in until then, um, for, for a very long time, I didn't really know um, where I was, um, the this uh, land that I live on. And I'm also just recently have begun to discover and learn about um, this land that I, I live and work on. Um, the first work that I would like to present to you is called Don't They Ever Stop Migrating? And this is when um, it's sort of like my I would say a third chapter of my work. Um, the first chapter was um, kind of exploring what the uh, abstraction, pictorial abstraction was about. The second chapter was more about kind of existential investigation into uh, the materiality of paint and myself. Um, and I frame my practice as a self-portraiture. And so I think everything that I do, I've been kind of um, asking myself, who am I? What am I doing here? You know, <laughs> where am I? Those, quite, those fundamental questions. And in different ways and through abstraction, I've uh, sort of, you know, slowly began to find answers in different ways. And this is sort of the beginning of a third chapter where um, I've been thinking, so this, I was invited to do a a show, a project um, at the Venice Biennale in 2015. And um, I began to think about myself as a social being. So seeing myself in the society. And at that time there was this um, uh, so-called migration crisis in Europe um, that was starting to happen from the spring of 2015. And 
I was then living in Venice and um, that kind of um, sort of the media portrayal of the immigration, the migrant invasion of Europe kind of started to kind of click something in me. And I wanted to think about uh, what that means in Venice. Um, and so um, I made this uh, room, up, which is, um, so it's, it's actually, this is like in a church, um, in an oratorio. Uh, where they, it, it's a little church that is attached to a hospice that used to host um, 12 um, retired um, uh, priests who didn't have children or descendants who could take care of them. And it was like a, a place that uh, a Dodge um, in 16th century had donated to the church. And it was uh, run like that until 1970 when it was handed over to the city and now it functions more as an art presentation space. So I think there's some kind of connection with the Paul Ottawa kind of uh, ideology. And so, um, so this is the little chapel that is attached to the hospice. Um, and so in a way, it's a very transitional uh, space because these uh, priests, retired uh, priests would, you know, come and go. Um, and what I wanted to kind of uh, think through here and the audience that I was um, addressing with this work was really the international art people who, including me, uh, prize themselves as um, ve being very open-minded, um, you know, uh, of course, uh, we have to welcome uh, migrants. It's all the society's fault that we are not, uh, you know, welcoming them and, you know, these benefits of having a diverse society and so on. But at the same time, I think we, I, um, also have this, um, uh, understand this uh, fear of what I consider to be other. And when there are uh, a number of them uh, coming to my home, uh, my nation, whatever, however I want to define where my uh, boundary is, then I do feel threatened. And I think that is a very kind of primal uh, human instinct. And I think that kind of uh, instinct is uh, worked so that, you know, humans, homo sapiens have uh, survived for this long. But I think, so I, there's like two sides, like there's this kind of fear that we all feel that I think in the art world, um, a lot of people, uh, uh, a lot of us um, don't think that we have, uh, we want to kind of cover it up um, as if uh, to say that, you know, we welcome, but then if uh, it comes, if it really comes to it, then we're not, we're a bit hesitant. And so this kind of tension between uh, fear of the other, but also, um, um, uh, you know, this kind of, um, uh, how to say, um, hypocrisy, perhaps in the art world that I wanted to address with this work. And so there are basically uh, brushworks, there are brushstrokes, uh, ink brushstrokes on uh, a large fabric box that you enter into. Um, and this work was uh, traveled a little bit. Now it's in the collection of Agnes Etherlington uh, Art Center in Kingston, but this one was shown in the rooms. And so this was in Venice where you would enter the chapel right off from the street. And it, it's almost like, um, uh, the way that migration happens in Italy, where, you know, they're really, it's, it's, um, it's happening right there and then, whereas in Canada, um, we do have this uh, buffer called Atlantic Ocean, and so we don't feel it in the same way that I think in uh, Europe people feel it. And so here in, at the rooms, what I did was to create a room within a room, and so you enter and then you have the option of going into the room or not going into the room. And so this is um, how the work was presented. 
And in Venice, it was like floating into the space, whereas in Canada, in, uh, in, at both the rooms and Agnes, um, Center, um, Agnes Etherington um, Art Center, it was kind of touching the floor. And I will show you a uh, video um, of video documentation of this work because um, it comes with the sound. And I hope that you can also hear the sound when it's playing. Can you hear the sound? Why? Not, not you yet. Oh, now, yes. Yeah. Can you see the video as well? What's happening? Think you're the cause why? Think you're the cause why? Don't know why. Sitting around here debating. Sitting around here debating. Who are you? What are you? What are you? What are you? What are you? Where did you come from? What are you? Where did you come from? I think you're the cause of all this. Don't you like us? Um, so, were you able to see the video as well, or was it just the sound? It was ah, just the sound. Okay. Oh shoot! Um. <laughs> but it's still very, it's still very powerful. Uh, okay. <laughs> so that, so you, ha I will maybe ask you to maybe mix that in your head, this uh, sound with uh, this kind of imagery, imagining yourself in that space. And so what I did was I took ten uh, lines of uh, dialogue lines from the movie, The Birds, uh, and kind of mix the, the, the words, um, the way that I mix these brush strokes. And so, and then sometimes this, this sound would come on and then sometimes it would go off. And you can sometimes decipher what they're saying, um, just as you can decipher some of these brush strokes and not, and so when you kind of come into this room, it's quite beautiful, you know, they're like this like, um, you know, quite uh, uh, beautiful. Uh, but then when this sound is combined with this visual, then um, it could get quite frightening. So I wanted to kind of uh, play with this uh, juxtaposition between um, this kind of uh, positive attitude towards, um, newness coming in versus our fear of, of that uh, same thing. Um, and if you actually think about the movie, The Birds, for those of you who might have seen it, um, the reaction of each characters to the birds is very similar to um, our reaction to migration. Um, in certain ways. And so I thought that was really interesting kind of uh, motif to take. And so I took that. And uh, so it is kind of like a painting sound installation. So that's one work that I wanted to present. And I wanted to show this because I think there was some kind of like interesting ideological um, sort of uh, marriage with, uh, with Paul, but also I wanted to show how I began in terms of thinking about myself uh, within the society. And at this point, I was thinking about where I was living because um, I was living half a year here and half a year in Venice. 
um, and uh, the, um, the issues that were uh, very um, important um, there. Um, and then, um, you know, I was making some other works and so on. And come 2017, um, uh, you know, when Canada celebrated its 150 years um, of, uh, uh, of uh, foundation, um, and then, you know, there were a lot of like uh, discussions on what is it being celebrated? Um, um, and, you know, this kind of dichotomy between colonizers and colonized and whose land are we living on really? Um, and so I, it, that kind of question really struck home with me as a newer settler um, than probably most of you, because um, I came to Montreal when I was in, in 1988. So I'm a relatively newer settler, uh, but settler nonetheless. And so also uh, part of the colonial force um, because immigration itself um, is a very colonial project. And so I wanted to kind of think through that a little bit. Um, and so I made this work called Perpetual Guest so in 2017, because of this um, 150th anniversary of Canada, it made me kind of really think more about, this is also self-portrait, more about like how, what am I doing here on in Ottawa, on Anishinaabe, Algonquin land? And why do I not know anything about that land and those people? <laughs> How is that possible? Because I mean, you know, I think it's normal that newcomers um, learn the language of the people who have been there. Whereas in Canada, it was the reverse where um, the newcomers um, language is, you know, more uh, dominant than, um, more dominant than, um, you know, uh, the language of the people who are here. Can you see the image that I'm showing? What do you see? Because I see this like sharing is paused. So, so I don't really know what this means. Do you see any image here? Um, I see a, um, a room with um, sort of a, a lattice structure of uh, lights on top uh-huh yeah. and works on the floor right and work on the floor yeah okay, yeah, like okay. Right. Glass, glass. i don't know why it's saying sharing is paused oh bring your shared window to the front but anyways i'm glad that you're seeing it <laughs> so i continue and so uh, uh i did a residency in 2018 at dawson city in Yukon and um started to learn a little bit about uh Canadian um, colonization of Canada, um, basically, in very general terms, but also very particular to Trondek Wichin people who are um, the, the, whose nation it is um, uh, uh, in Dawson City in the Yukon. And, um, you know, it was just kind of more like self education because. Um, with the help of the cultural center there and with the help of some friends that I met there. Uh, but a lot of like uh, going to the library and reading a lot of stuff that uh, is like quite uh, heartbreaking um, as we um, have found out even this week. Um, and these, these are things that we, I think people knew that there will be uh, graves of children or children will be buried um, near uh, the residential school sites um, but um, now it's just discovered, that's all, you know. Um, but, you know, I was kind of uh, learning a lot about what does it mean, uh, what, what happened really. Um, and, and then started to sort of think about myself as a perpetual guest. 
And of course, there was always this question of belonging and not belonging as immigrants and so on. But then uh, after um, doing some research into the colonial history of Canada, I realized that I was also a settler um, and that I bear some responsibility to this land. Um, even if it wasn't my decision to come to Canada, um, it was my parents' decision. Um, but I do, as a collective Canadian, uh, do bear some responsibility. And so um, I made this work, kind of thinking about, at the time of making this work, I was kind of thinking about how uneasy I feel living and working here, because it's not my land. Um, so it was like kind of walking on eggshell kind of thing, feeling. And so basically what I did was I made these paintings that are on untempered glass. And so they look quite fragile in the space and they are essentially squares that are on rectangular clear glass that are propped up with these aluminum cylinders that kind of that are not fixed. And so, um, you know, it's very easily toppable if you are touching it. But I wanted to sh shift our gaze from the verticality to horizontality. So it's one way of me kind of rethinking how we view things um, and how important the land is. And I wanted from straight on for us to think about, look at the land. I didn't want Mm, this, this exhibition to look like a non-objective painting that looks nice. I wanted the specificity to be there. So I wrote down on the floor on the, at the entrance so that we are right away um, thinking about the land. Uh, so, invité perpétuel sur cette terre non cédée de la nation algonquin Anishinaabe. And then you enter and then you see this uh, nine panels, glass panels. Um, they are of different combinations of grays, um, and I wanted us to look through the painting to the land. And so I wanted my, me to be very aware of where I'm putting my feet, but also to be looking through my painting, the land on which we stand. And, you know, when there are this kind of so much pain um, in history, I think there's this kind of like, and there's no way to really resolve that. Um, I think there's some uh, ghost stories. I think haunting um, is very prominent. Um, like, you know, I mean, if you can't resolve things in real life, then um, it sort of goes to the other domain, <laughs> other um, sort of uh, level. And um, I sort of thought about all these like eyes that are looking at us, like the past eyes of past people who are looking at us and, you know, trying to say some stuff. So I have some pylons are kind of uh, distanced in uh, with the width of eyes and some are not, um, as you can see here. And then I showed um, the same work with another uh, series of work um, at the Fondation Phi in Montreal last year. And there, um, since it is a Netherlands, um, it is not uh, just Algonquin and Shnabe, but it's also Haudenosaunee land. And so um, each time this work travels, I get to do some research into uh, the land that it's presented. And it will be soon presented at Esker Foundation in Calgary on Treaty 7 land. And so now I'm in the process of doing some research and uh, on, on that uh, treaty relation, which is very different from also unceded land. And here I'm presenting three uh, perpetual guest works that are on the floor. And then also three works that are from why does it lock fit my key? It's a line taken from um, uh, the title is taken from Toni Morrison's book uh, called Home. And it's basically kind of changing the relationship, power relationship. Why should always key fit the lock? Why can't the lock fit the key, you know? Um, and I wanted to sort of think about our relationship 
my relationship, power relationship, like in terms of like how I look at painting, um, the framing of it, um, what am I looking at? Um, so here, for example, um, I'm very clearly saying that we're only seeing a section of the reality. My perspective is only a section. And so there are always like lines that are perpendicular or parallel to the floor, but then the painting is the one, the, the frame of the painting is the one that is skewed, not the image itself. And so kind of thinking about different um, ways of framing different perspectives, thinking about different perspectives and power relations as well. Um, so this was at the Fondation Fee in Montreal. And then I wanted to share with you one show that I did. Um, this was actually, you know, uh, post lockdown, at, after lockdown, uh, work that I did after the lockdown. Um, it's called Oat. Um, so after I did this uh, perpetual guest uh, work where I was thinking about me, you know, um, how do I live on this land? I started to think about this uh, sort of relationship between guest and host. And I started to also think about um, the problems that arise from the position of a guest. Uh, because if I think about being a guest, I can be a very good guest, you know, I go to some friend's house, um, I'm a good guest and then I come out. I have, I don't share the responsibility of running the household. I don't share the responsibility of cleaning it or, you know, I am, I can be a very good guest and just, you know, do my little bit, but that doesn't really um, take me far enough for some guests who are here on permanent basis because I'm not responsible for the whole house. I don't pay mortgage when I visit, you know, for example. And so I was thinking about what does it mean to be a guest and a host? Um, and, what, and so I began this series called Oat Now uh, with this question of can guest host, can host guest, these kinds of questions. So questioning the, the relationship. But then at some point in the middle, um, I realized that this was the wrong question to ask. Uh, because it's not about the, the positionality, but it's about the responsibility that we have, uh, that we take. And so anyways, um, I did the series of drawings um, and I think I'll show you some images, but then I'll show you a video where I talk about the work, but also um, show you how it sort of all came together as an artist book in the end. So here I'm just showing a few drawings um, that are part of the series Oath. And I will show you this video, which also shows my studio. Um, do you see this uh, YouTube screen? Can you see this video? You just hear it. We hear the, we hear the video. Hmm. I'm not, not sure. It. Okay. Let's see. I'm not sure why it's not showing. Now, do you see the video? Uh, what do you see on your screen? It's basically just the, the, the brush marks, like birds. Oh, I see. Maybe it's the other, the previous. Uh, okay, so let me close that. And then I'll share. Ah, now I understand what I was doing. Were you even seeing other, other works? Yeah. <laughs> okay, hold on. Uh, Okay. Okay. So, do you now see the the video? Uh, we yeah, we see the. It says virtual artist studio visit. Great. Okay. 
Great. <clears throat> yeah, with it looks like a new. Hi, too. my name yeah. is Jenny Yu. I'm an artist based in Ottawa. I've been asked to talk about uh, what I did since the lockdown of this pandemic and also to show you my studio. So here it is. Um, this is how I enter my studio. Um, it's a place where I come to think and make work. Right now, I just finished a series, a body of work. And so I had just cleaned up my studio and you see it in a very clean um, state. So the work that I did um, during the lockdown is called Oat. Um, it's a series of 42 drawings that I did uh, since last April when the lockdown started. Um, it was, you know, hard uh, time, confusing time, stressful time for everybody. And I started to just, you know, uh, make one drawing a day. Um, it was really rather helpful for me to have uh, this uh, kind of daily task um, that I could accomplish and just to get through um, the whole um, stress and shock of it all. Um, the, the idea behind this uh, series called Oat uh, comes out of my previous series called Perpetual Guest. It was a series of painting installation where I was exploring what it means for me to live here as a settler immigrant on the unceded territory of Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation. I was invited by the colonial power to come and settle here. I was not invited by the original inhabitants of this land, the real host. Um, so I am an unwelcomed guest of an unwelcomed and I am a welcomed guest but of an unwelcomed guest. And so um, in that series, I was thinking about this um, feeling of unsettledness, um, feeling of um, not really precariousness, but being always feeling like I must be very careful because I'm a guest of a guest on this land. And um, that kind of led me to think about um, the sense of responsibility that guests and hosts have and the problematics of limited sense of responsibility um, that guests can have or can think that they have. And so um, I wanted to um, think about these established positions of guest and host. And so I started this uh, series think, thinking about um, these three words, uh, can guest host, can host guest, guest can host, host can guest. And so I started to take um, this notion and took this um, idea of door, this motif of door and started to draw. And when I first started to draw, um, it was fairly clearly defined positions of guest and host. And as I kept going, um, it started to become a little bit more complicated and more complex. And so they became gray on gray. And this idea, um, this revelation thing came when I fell upon this word, uh, oat. Uh, which in French can mean guest as well as host. And I thought it was a perfect title for this idea of thinking about guest and host and sharing of responsibility as uh, everybody who's living here on this land. And so the doors um, become gray on gray wall and they started to kind of open up a little bit and um, so, and it was important for me that these uh, drawings were presented in sequence. Um, this book was uh, made with the help of Xenia Fink and Anne Deuter um, in Berlin. And um, so this is how it ends. Um, and this is what I did during the lockdown. Thanks for watching and uh, take care.
<clears throat> okay. Um, so, um, I'm not sure if you saw this, these images that I'm showing you now before when I was talking about all this. Did you? Hello? Yes, I believe we did. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, so yeah, so this is kind of my latest work. Uh, this, um, this series called Oat. And um, I wanted to maybe like at this point, um, open it up to discussion. Um, and I don't know um, if you have any questions or um, I want like these days what I'm, since last week, uh, last Friday, um, when the mass grave was uh, discovered, I've been trying to process um, that um, a little bit. Um, I'm still in the process and I thought maybe this would be a good forum for me to have a discussion with you um, in terms of, you know, what do we do? How, how, how do we deal with this? Um, how do we go? Where do we go um, forward? How do we go forward um, as, um, um, as who we are? Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I will now open it up to questions or however um, you want to take it. So, Does hi, Jenny. Have... Jenny here. Oh, I have a, one comment when you were talking about host in French, well, in the Catholic Church, the host is also something that you take as part of communion. And in French, right. it's the old. And I thought, that's very, it's an interesting host and old and, and uh, looking at the indigenous community and, and these days and, and your body of work and we are all guests. I thought that just struck me in, the, in relation to what's, what has been discovered in the last week or so. so. Mm. Um, in, you know, I mean, this has been a pretty devastating week week uh, with the revelation of the uh, Kamloops um, tragedy <clears throat> and uh, um, you know I've, I've seen uh, um, I don't know if it's in Ottawa or Winnipeg or where it is or maybe even Kamloops but um, a shrine that was uh, established that showed the um, shoes of or shoe different types of shoes that these children would have worn and some of them some of the shoes were made uh, unfinished to reflect or to characterize an unfinished life and I thought that that was very powerful um, I was at the Holocaust Museum in um, Washington D.C just before it opened in <clears throat> 93 and it, it, it wasn't finished yet, but there was a room um, or various rooms that had the actual shoes of children that died in the Holocaust in Europe. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, like actual, actual shoes, the actual shoes, incredibly powerful and credit because you realize, well, they're not just shoes there. They are, each pair of shoes represents a person, a life. Mm -hmm. And I really feel that, you know, with everything that's happened um, in Canadian history over the past, I don't know, 100, 150, 200 years with respect to the Indigenous population, you know, there's reports here, there's reports there, there's, you know, the Truth and Re Reconciliation Commission, there's a strategic plan that comes out. Um, but I think that, um, I, 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 I think this, this latest revelation warrants a national monument because it's so powerful and it, I guess it's the scale 
it's the scale. It's the fact that it was um, hidden all these years. I mean, you know, like there are records in that are being hidden. Nobody came forward. I mean, how do 200 and whatever it is, 13 or 251 children, children die and nobody from the outside community knows about it. I mean, it's, I think, I, I mean, I, 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 I think, you know, a lot of people knew, <laughs> a lot of people knew. I think uh, one of the problems is that we, we as in um, Canadians didn't know uh, because we didn't get educated or we didn't educate ourselves of what was happening, you know, and I really like this parallel that you're drawing, David, um, to Holocaust, because I do think that it is a genocide. Um, but I think what's really striking is that it's uh, it's not really in the past it's still happening and so I think memorial would be a great thing I think anything <laughs> is great um, to kind of to get uh, us to think about it uh, but we also have to um, as Canadians um, sort of uh, make Canada uh, responsible whenever we find genocide in the world you know take exactly the same steps and you know investigate what happened and take people who are responsible, you know, uh, to, 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 to take the responsibility. And that I think somehow includes everyone in Canada um, who are settlers, uh, settler background. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think what's, what's I think very striking uh, and slightly different um, is that this is current um, and it's not um, sort of in the past. And so um, I, actually put together like a list of like um, sort of resources that I used uh, to sort of educate myself in certain issues. And it's really by no means um, uh, comprehensive or anything. It's just the beginning. But I thought maybe I would um, share it with you um, uh, perhaps. Um, uh, and I could also send it to you um, as, can you see this, uh, this thing? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I, I could send this to you so that you can sort of use, um, uh, you know, you can click the links. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think what's really sad is that it's still happening. Um, and mm. uh, and um, sort of the effect of it is still being felt. Yeah. You can hear me. Um, yeah. I, as an American uh, perpetual guest here, <laughs> I know what you, I, I feel that your work is phenomenal. I, and I've been only back in Canada for like three years, kind of the year before the pandemic and then everything happened because uh, I've been overseas for about 20 years. But I have to say that as an American, facing the monster is always better um, because I were, I kind of went to school for in Philadelphia for documentary film and audio and doing you know audio work and video and I really love your sound work and I think the sound work itself is is sufficient it's great it would be great to see the visual and the audio but really I always believe that historical experience uh, it's essential to capture sound some element of sound when you're walking through an exhibition. And uh, you, you did it. <laughs> you did it just with the audio. So yes, from now on, it's not always necessary, but it's nice when there is some audio, like the audio component. Of what you've done. <laughs> facing the I'm just to say, as an American, facing the monster in Canada, you guys take the time because this quick reaction is not a good thing. Like, what do we do to resolve this? It just doesn't work in any way like that. It only works when people are given time to grieve and process. And I think that an artistic approach to this, a, a human approach to this is, is letting people go through the stages and not coming up with something to, to solve it and make it go away. Because the racial thing in the US, it's just gonna keep going on and on and on because it, it involves time, it needs time, yeah. healing. 
it needs time, but I think it also needs urgency. You know? <laughs> <laughs> in, like, yes, um, we know that it doesn't, it's not something that can be solved in a day, but um, there's some urgency that we have to kind of take up um, as well. And, you know, it's not, I think any colonial settler countries, um, including US, um, there's the racial issues um, everywhere in the world, but also, you know, we have an additional burden um, as settlers living on settler colonial countries. And so it's very complicated, but, you know, I think we, we do best we can, the best we can, <laughs> and, but there are a lot of things we can do. And so, yeah. But what would you suggest in, in it sounds like you have some idea of something to do. I think we can like start to, I mean, I, first of all, like uh, I'm trying to still get myself educated. And I think once we know uh, we cannot not do anything about it because, you know, it's just kind of amazing what happened. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, there are so many uh, sort of resources that are out there. Like I, the other day I was, um, I got into uh, learning Anishina Bemoen, the language because I was like, you know, I came to Canada in 88, I learned French and then I learned English, but then I don't know Anishina Bemoen. Why? <laughs> What's wrong with me, <laughs> you know? But then I also found out that it's harder for me to learn and also because I'm older, but um, <laughs> now than before, but um, also because it's not necessary for me on a day-to-day -day basis for me to know the language. And so then there's no necessity for me to learn it. And so then it's harder. And so, you know, that made me think like something's wrong, you know, <laughs> um, but uh, I think uh, we can demand Canadian government uh, so that we actually um, investigate the crime scenes uh, and face the consequences of what has happened and adopt all the TRC recommendations that happen. And I think we are, um, you know, since six years that it came out, I think there are a lot of things that has happened, but a lot more can happen like education in within the education. I think we have to uh, demand um, that we educate our people uh, of the history, the colonial history, and that we also um, as settlers take initiative to educate ourselves. Yes, yeah. the, cur the curriculum design, um, I agree absolutely. It's always about the young, it's not always about the young people, but there is a mm -hmm. way to turn the page mm -hmm. by having, that's, I, I, I did a master's in education, but the mm -hmm. whole idea, I did an educational package on AIDS in Philadelphia for high schools when it was, when it was eight, when it was the eighties, you know, mm -hmm. and people were like, I don't know about this, but it was, it's always the schools I heard him talking about this morning on the CBC now, curriculum design and this history is exactly what they're talking about doing right now. But we can also, as adults, um, we can also um, uh, uh, fill the lacuna that we have, you know, of our education that I got. Like, I mean, you know, I went to um, secondary school in Montreal and up to undergrad in Montreal, but really I didn't learn any colonial history, I must say. And so, uh, you know, it only happened when I started to question through my work, like, who am I? What, where am I? What am I doing here? Kind of questions that, and then that coinciding with the 150th anniversary of Canada. And then, you know, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, that's how it happened for me. But I think uh, now with this, um, you know, this shocking uh, thing that happened last uh, Friday, I think we can all kind of um, little by little uh, educate ourselves and then try to change our ways of being, I think. And it's, it's not easy, I think, because we have to basically give up space. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's hard. It's really hard. 